Hey everyone, Pastor Jeff here. Uh, I want to welcome you back to our Wednesday evening message and time together. And uh, I truly hope you're having a great week. And uh, I pray that God is truly blessing you and uh, encouraging your heart uh, each and every day uh, that we go along. God is truly good to us and he blesses us in a powerful way. I want to speak to you about Daniel, the prophet Daniel, and the, the way in which he knew God. I think that's important uh, to understand uh, today. We need to know God in these hours. It's going to be so important that we have a relationship with him, that, that we can understand as we can his mind. And it's interesting that when Daniel had an encounter here with God, and God supernaturally uh, expressed himself through Daniel to King Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, it, Daniel, in a moment of praise and exaltation unto God, gives us some idea of what he did know about God. So let me share that with you uh, in the scriptures. You see, the prophet Daniel, and I, I love studying the book of Daniel. I've, I've spent a lot of time studying the book, and it always intrigues me uh, to see and to know um, Daniel's walk in life with God is wrong with the three Hebrews, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But Daniel is one of the most exceptional people in the Bible. Uh, I'm sure that he himself made mistakes. He was a human being just as we are. But Daniel also had a faith walk with God uh, that was amazing. Uh, it God gifted him with wisdom and the abilities uh, through the Holy Spirit uh, like few that we see in the Word of God. So Daniel knew God, and as a result, he used what it was that he knew of God to help others, even uh, as he did with King Nebuchadnezzar. So we, see, we want to pick up here in the Scriptures, and I'll read in a moment my text from Daniel 2, but... Nebuchadnezzar had a dream that troubled him, and he called for his advisors to uh, to uh, help him to understand what he had been shown in his dream. And uh, when when he did call his advisors, instead of them uh, or instead of them being asked to interpret the dream. Nebuchadnezzar asked them to tell him what the dream was. Not just interpretation, but he understood that if these people were true prophets, that they were true seers, if they truly could see these things, they could tell him what the dream was. And of course, these men uh, said that it was impossible what the king was uh, requesting. And so as a result, of their reply back to the king of the impossibility of it, he ordered the execution of all the seers and the wise men because they could not tell him what he wanted to do. I'm going to tell you, we are today walking in some situations that almost look Im totally impossible uh, to overcome. You know, we've seen our economy clouds. We've seen this pandemic that has broke out. We've seen all the death and the destruction and all the things. And, you know, many people are wondering, can we come back? Can we ever flourish? Can can we be what we would call normal again? Uh, what is life going to look like? And, and so a lot of those impossibilities loom within our life. But in Matthew chapter 19 and verse 26, Jesus reminded us that uh, with men, this is impossible, he told them. But with God, all things are possible. I want you to say that with me right now. All things are possible with God. And, and, and that's what God's people have to know. That's our strength in knowing who our God is. So when Daniel heard what the king was planning to do to destroy the people that could not answer and tell him what the dream would, he called his friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and they prayed. They sought God. This is so key and so pivotal 
that we've got to understand that prayer is our lifeline to God. It is our form of communication. It is our intimacy with God. It, it, it is sharing your heart and letting God share his heart with you when you pray. And the scripture says that they pray, and when Daniel went to sleep that night, God gave him a vision. So I want you to see the progression there. They prayed, and then God gave. In other words, they prayed, they left it in God's hands, and then God gave them the vision with the answer he needed to save himself, his friends, and the Babylonian leaders as well. And so Daniel knew and then understood what the king's dream was. So I think that that presents us with a, a neat um, a way to approach life. They pray, God gives, and Daniel knew. That's what God wants us to do. He wants us to pray, he wants us to receive, and then he wants us to give back to the people whom he has given unto us to touch. In 2 Chronicles 20 and verse 12, we see uh, the king saying, Oh, our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us, nor do we know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. I don't know where your eyes are at today. I pray they're on God. But if your eyes are on the storm, if your eyes are on the pandemic, if your eyes are on politics, if your eyes are on people, you need to get them off of people and get them on God. He's the only one that's going to give us the strength that we need today. Before Daniel went to speak what he knew to Nebuchadnezzar to reveal the dream to him, he penned some words that helps us to see into his heart to know what it was that he knew in life. So this is important for us to see because it reveals the heart of Daniel. Uh, in Daniel chapter 2 in verse 19 through 23, it says, During the night, the mystery was revealed to Daniel in a vision. Then Daniel praised the God of heaven and said, Praise be to the name of God, forever and ever. Wisdom and power are his. He changes times and seasons. He disposes kings and raises up others. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the discerning. He reveals deep and hidden things. He knows what lies in darkness and light dwells with him. I thank and praise you God of my ancestors, you have given me wisdom and power. You have made known to me what we ask of you. You have made known to us the dream about the king. So right here, and let's just go over this right quick and, and, and to understand what Daniel knew because he had a relationship with God. First of all, Daniel uh, understood that God is unchanging and he is worthy of of our praise. He said, praise be to the name of God forever and forever. When was the last time that you truly praised God? I mean, you truly showered your love and your adoration, your thankfulness and your gratefulness to God for all of his goodness, for everything that he's given to us, knowing full well in our hearts that we don't deserve it, knowing full well in our hearts how we fail God so often. And yet, praise is a sign of understanding that we know God and that he knows us and that we can praise him for every situation. The scripture says in all things, give thanks and give praise unto God. That means for things that uh, are right, and that means for things that don't don't seem to be right. Praise is our key to victory. You can't keep a Christian down that knows how to praise God. You can't keep a grateful, thankful Christian down because they will they will overcome because they understand that God is their strength in life. And and he said, "Praise be the name of God forever and." forever. You see, God is unchanging, and he is worthy of praise. 
Malachi 3 and 6, the scripture says, For I am the Lord, I do not change. Aren't you thankful that God blesses you in spite of all your ups and downs and ins and outs and your indecisions and can't make up your mind and sometimes your double-mindedness? But God doesn't change. And Daniel said, I praise him because he is an unchanging God and he is worthy of our praise. Hebrews 13 and 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I wish somebody would just praise God right now for his consistency towards you, for his eyes being upon you to bless you forever and forever. When you know God, you know that he is worthy of our praise. You know God. You know that he does not change. You know that he's the Alpha, the Omega, the first, the last, the beginning, and the end. And you know that all the promises of God are yes and amen. You know that he ain't going to back out. He ain't going to back down. He's never going to leave you. He's never going to forsake you. The word is true. And somebody just ought to get their praiser going right now and praise the God of glory for his strength unto you. He's a good God. You got something to praise him about. Don't tell me you don't. You know, we, 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 we look at the black side, the dark side, the back side, and everything else that we can look at that's depressing and discouraging. But somebody needs to lift your head up and in the process, lift up your hands and begin to praise God for how good he's been to you. Hallelujah. Oh, praise be unto God. I feel the presence of God right now speaking to somebody's heart to get your praise on. Amen. You know, Daniel went on to say that he said that, that um, praise be to the name of God forever and ever for wisdom and power are his. You see, when you know God, you understand that wisdom and power belongs to him. God is always wise. He's always powerful. Let me ask you something. Where is your source for wisdom and power? Where, where has it been lately? Is it in God? Or is it in man? Is it in science? Or is it in God? Is it in medicine? Or is it in God? Is it in politics? Or is it in God? You see, Daniel said, wisdom and power are his. Jude chapter 1, verse 24 through 25 says, Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory, with exceeding joy. Listen to verse 25. To God, our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. I'm telling you, God alone has the wisdom we need. God alone has the insight that we need today. And Daniel knew that this God that he served was always wise and always powerful. He will come through in some way, in some fashion for him. He went on to say, he said that he changes the times and the seasons. You see, God is moving uh, time forward. God is always moving forward. The changing of the seasons. The changing of the times are a reminder that God is always on the move. God is always progressing. God is always moving forward. Let me ask you something. Have you put yourself in a position to move with God? Or are you resisting God? Daniel said he's a God always on the move. He changes the times and the seasons. It's the progression of time. It moves. You can't live in yesterday. If you try to live in yesterday, uh, you're not living in the will of God. You've got to live in the moment. God said, I am that I am. I am means present here and now. You, yesterday's gone. You can't change it. Time is moving on. It's time for you to turn loose of the past 
and to flow with God through the seasons and the changes of time so that God can heal you from all the things that you've gone through because your God is a now God, an on time God, ready to meet the very needs that you have. Quit resisting God. Quit resisting His urgings to move you forward through the times and the seasons. 2 Corinthians 3, 16, 17, or 3, 2 Corinthians 3, 17 through 18. Now, the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Do you understand that? We're being transformed just as the seasons transform from spring to summer to fall until winter. We are being transformed by God. This is so important for us to understand. Quit resisting the transformation of God. We are transformed into that image from glory to glory, from level to level, from place to to place. And Daniel said, this is the God I know. He changes times and seasons. We know that he's the same yesterday and forever, but he's not stuck in yesterday. He is moving us forward. James 5, 7 through 8 says, therefore be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, waiting patiently for it, until it receives the early and the latter rain. You also be patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord is at hand. So here, he, James is telling us about patience. He says, hang in there. The seasons change. You're not always going to be where you are. You're not always going to be living in this same way. There's not always going to be a pandemic with us. There's not always going to be all this lockdown and stuff that is with us. Because he said, just as surely as the farmer patiently waits for the early and the latter rain, God is also going to change your time and change your season and change the, 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 the situation about you. You've got to trust him to know and you've got to move with him when he wants to move. So what else did Daniel know about God? Daniel understood that God is the one who controls the kings of the world. Have you worried too much in this 2020 year that things seem to be out of control. I mean, I know they are. I mean, sometimes we get up and we don't know how things are going to be, what disaster is going to be. But he said God controls the situation. We forget that so often in our life that God is in control. Um, Daniel said in verse 21 of chapter 2, he disposes kings and raises up others. Romans chapter 13 and verse 1. Let every soul be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God. And the authorities that exist are appointed by God. Daniel was about to report to the king. Daniel was under the threat of being murdered and being executed because people and the other advisors could not tell the king what he wanted to know, but because Daniel knew that God alone was king and that he sets up and he tears people down, he had a calm assurance that God was in control. You and I need to get a calm assurance that God is in control. We don't need to worry about the election and what's coming up. We just need to do the will of God. Do his will and let God take care of, oh, I see people fretting out. They're worried. They're snapping at others. They're, they've gone crazy. They've lost their senses. They're getting too political. They get mad at each other. They get upset. They get red faced. They can't sleep at night because they're letting politics control them. They're, they're, they're worried about who's a Republican and who's a Democrat and who's an independent. They're worried about progressives and this and that. Look, you do your part. You do what God's called you to do in life. And the Bible says that God will set up and tear down who he needs 
to tear down. Your part and my part is understanding we're not in control. God is. Hallelujah. And when you have a relationship with God, you are firmly convinced that he is in control. Fifthly, Daniel knew that God gives wisdom to those who are wise enough to seek it. How often have you asked God for wisdom? You know, it, 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 it's, it's, so, it, it's so interesting in life, you know, about wisdom. You see, he said, praise be the name of God forever and ever. Wisdom and power are his. I, I think so many times, folks, listen to me, that that we go to God as a last resort. We, we go to everybody else, and then when everybody else fails us and everybody else can't come through for us, we say, well, I guess I might have to give God a chance or give God. We ought to go to God first. Seek first the kingdom of God. You, you know, why don't we go to him to start with? You know, and, and then when we go to him, we don't go to him sincerely. We just go and we tell God our problem, but we don't walk away in faith, believing God to take care of anything. I, I just wonder about that sometimes. You know, why we're not having faith in the wisdom of God. Proverbs 9 and verse 10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Do, you even, do we even fear God? Because to fear God, that means, that means to know he is God. He's in control. He, he's the one who speaks the world into existence. He, he's the one who says and things become. He's the one who says and things disappear. And he says when we fear God, you know, the right kind of way, we respect, we have all for him. And we understand his wisdom is great. James 1, 5. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. Daniel had to have wisdom here. He had to have God to come through for them. And as a result, we understand that God gave him what he needed. He went on to say that God gives knowledge to people who will think like him in Daniel chapter 2. Uh, verse 21, you know, he, he went on to say that he changes times and seasons, exposes kings and raises up others. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the discerning. You see, if God can give you wisdom, but if you don't know what to do with it, God has wisdom, but he also gives knowledge to the discerning. The people, you, you, you know, the people who will think like God. You see, he gives knowledge to people who will think like God. You say, Pastor, you're, you're asking me to think like God. How can I think like God? Get the Bible down. Open it up. Those, those are the thoughts of God. That is the Word of God. That is the revealed Word of God. If you want to think like God, read the Word of God. You see, and he gives knowledge to those who will read his Word, that they will know how to apply wisdom to they're very uh, situations in life. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 13 through 16. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for their foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord that, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. There it is. We have the mind of Christ because we have the word of God. And the word of God, which is the law of you know, it, that the law of God, the Greek, means the written word. The rhema is the revelation that he will lift off of that law of God into your spirit. You need to ask God to reveal knowledge to you so that you can know what to do. And Daniel had to have that knowledge. His very life depended upon it. And God gave it to him. He went on to say, God reveals deep things. 
that we could not know apart from his revelation. We there, there are some things that that, that that surface knowledge won't won't help us with. That we need to know uh, those things that that seem uh, to be hidden by revelation. Daniel said in verse 22 of chapter 2, he reveals deep and hidden things. He reveals deep and hidden things. You know, what's a mystery to you is not a mystery to God. What's a secret to you is not a secret to God because God knows all things. 1 Corinthians 2, 9 through 12, but it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. It's through the spirit. You, you see, that I said before, the fleshly man cannot receive the things of God. He who sows to the spirit will reap destruction and death. But he who sows to the spirit will see life and peace. And so God wants to reveal those things to you that are, that, that are keeping you in the dark and are keeping you, you in the place of not knowing. But you've got to have that relationship with him and understand that the Spirit will help you to search all things that you do not know. Wrapping this up, Daniel went on to understand that God is light. He dispels the darkness. You see, in verse 22, it says he reveals deep and hidden things. He knows what lies in darkness, and light dwells with him. Look, 1 John chapter 1, verse 5 through 7. This is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Are you walking in the light? Are you walking in Jesus? Have you asked God to fill you with the baptism of the Holy Spirit that would give the revelation to your life? Where are you? God is light. If, if, if you feel the cloud of darkness hovering over you, that's the enemy trying to bring condemnation over you. And the Bible says God has not given you the spirit of condemnation, but of, he's given you a spirit of power. He's not giving you a spirit of fear. God doesn't condemn you. There's therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. If you're walking in the light, it will dispel, it will push the darkness away. I pray for you right now that the darkness you're experiencing will be exchanged through the wisdom and the revelation and the knowledge of God, which will bring light to your spirit and understanding to your situation. Look, I want to close this. God gives us the abilities that we need to serve him and others. Listen, this is what he said in verse 23. I thank and praise God praise you, God of my ancestors. You have given me wisdom and power. You have made known to me what we ask of you, and you have made known to us the dream of the king. Daniel was who he was because he knew God. You and I have got to be known for who we are because we know God, and God knows us. People ought to look at you and see God. They ought to see Jesus inside you. I'm telling you when Nebuchadnezzar or, or um, King Cyrus or Belshazzar looked at Daniel, they saw a man with wisdom. When Belshazzar uh, saw the handwriting with the finger on the wall, um, his wife spoke up and said, there's a man here who knows God. It ought to be known of you that they know God. You see, he said, you have given me wisdom and power you've made known to me. You see, part of our life is that God doesn't just give us this wisdom and this understanding and this power to help us, but to help others understand God. So God not only made known to Daniel, which helped him, Daniel made known to the king what he needed to know, and he gave God the praise and the glory. 
we've got to be a stepping stone to others. And so when we ask of God, not just for ourselves, but ask it for others, that we may give them the hope and the light of which we have. Listen, church, the secret of Christian success is not measured by what we accomplish for God. Instead, it is measured by all that God accomplishes through us. That's so important. Let God work through you. Our success begins with knowing God like Daniel knew him. Let me pray with you. Father, I thank you today that our greatest uh, thing in life to do is to know God, to know him. Many people don't believe that, but when Jesus Christ gave up the, his spirit on the cross of Calvary, the Bible says that the veil of the temple was torn from top to bottom. The place where the Holy of Holies were, the only the priest, the high priest could go in. Uh, God opened up and he said, let us therefore now come boldly to the throne of grace to find help in time of need. I am telling you, God's not trying to keep you out. God's trying to bring you in. God's trying to knock on the door of your heart to get you to come into him today that he can reveal wisdom and knowledge and insight, insight and let you know who's in control and who has the authority. Father, if that one today that's listening to my voice doesn't know you as Savior of their life, I pray for the conviction power of the Holy Spirit to come upon them right now that they will repent of their sins. They will repent of their ways. And they will allow you to come in and cleanse their life and give them new direction and new hope. Now bless them, I pray, Father. Keep them and guard them in all their ways. Let your face shine upon them and give them grace and give them strength. And we'll give you the praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me just say a signing off. If you don't have a home church, come meet with us here at Brookstone at 3681 Cleveland Highway in Gainesville, Georgia. Uh, we, we'd be loved uh, to have you to come and be a part of our service at 1030 every Sunday morning. God bless you is my prayer. May he richly bless you and give you all that you desire in him. In Jesus' name, amen.